I think this is the end of the war on the women, and the Democrats have lost it. They tried it, as we saw famously in Colorado. It probably helped to defeat uh, Senator Udall because it, it became an object of ridicule. It was a sea of red that greeted America Wednesday morning. The midterm elections have given us what will undoubtedly be major change in Washington. The need for real compromise. A president on his heels and already talk of 2016. So let's put this all into perspective now. Let's welcome back to Midpoint, representing the 2nd Congressional District of North Carolina, Republican Renee Elmers joins us. Congresswoman, thanks so much for being here. It's great to be with you, Ed, especially after that big win yesterday. I think this is just an exciting time for America, and I'm just so excited about the opportunity that I see in front of us. Exciting indeed, but doesn't it also say to Republicans, now the work really begins, and the Republicans oh. have to make sure more than anybody else now that they deliver on the promises and make sure that they, as someone said earlier on this program, become the adults in the room and push this nation forward. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's exactly what our plan is. We're going to go back to Washington next week. The plans are already being laid out, and we are going to hit the ground running. We're going to get the work done that has been, um, you know, dragging out for so long, where, you know, we know that Harry Reid was able to stop any progress and opportunity in this country. We're going to put a plan of action together that's going to work for the American people. And it is, it is for the American people to scrutinize us on. I mean, we have... We have made commitments, and we need to stick to those commitments. We have to be strong for the American people. There are plenty of excuses now coming out, especially from the president, when it comes down to losing this, claiming that the electoral map was stacked against him, that this was nothing more than an aberration, that black America does not vote in the midterms, and they will come to vote again in 2016, and everything will change. How do you then, and people that you have already spoken to today, take these excuses, if you will, and what the president then now has to do in order to start being a little more presidential. Well, exactly. It's time for the president to be the leader that the American people have spoken. They spoke last night. They spoke in this election, and they said, we need a leader to, to lead this country. And, and Mr. President, it's time for you to do that. He has two years left. This is his opportunity to stand up for the American people and do what's right. And look, if he's already making excuses, then, then I, you know, look, I, I, feel, I feel less confident that he's going to do that. So someone does have to be the adults in the room, and that's for us to do. And in the House of Representatives, you know, there again, and I've told you before, hundreds of bills that we passed creating that opportunity in this country. Now the Senate will be able to act on it, and then those bills will make it to the president's desk, and he will have to answer to the American people. He won't be able to come up with any more excuses. But what will then push it through? Because I think you and I both know, Democrats know this as well, that when a lot of those bills get to the president's desk, he is simply going to put the veto pen to them and say, this is not what we need to do. But then he will have to answer to the American people, and the American people will hold him accountable. And you're, you're absolutely right. You know, this, this is his choice. You know, he makes the choice of using the pen and the phone, and, and he will have to stand up. But he has a legacy that he has to worry about now. He has two years left to prove to the American people that he can be the leader that he told us he was going to be when he was first elected. It's time for him to come to the table. It's time for him to work with Republicans and Democrats to pass me meaningful legislation to turn this economy around, first and foremost. He can make excuses about, about lines, and he can make excuses about voter turnout, but those are, those are lame excuses for what the American people are looking for. The American people sent him a clear message yesterday, and he needs to listen. i got about 30, 40 seconds left. Is a clear message being sent in the midterms that the war on women that we have heard for years was absolutely a stupid thing for the Democrats to continue to sit on. It doesn't exist, and it's time to put this dinosaur down. I agree, and, you know, look, they overplayed their hand on that one. It didn't work in their favor, and now you've seen the results. It's time to put that nonsense in Washington away, and let's work for the American people and empower every woman in this country. And, of course, let's make sure that everything works for 2016. Still got your eye on 2016, don't we? Absolutely. But, you know, we just have to show the American people a clear vision from here on out and not not continue to go from election to election, but just a clear vision of prosperity and, and, a, and a growth and a healthy economy. And we will be talking with you as we go through that and hopefully get there. Congresswoman Renee Elmers, thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you. All right. Take care. When we return, what the Republican control of Congress means for Latinos in this country. 
And coming up a little bit later on, General Motors says they were going to recall cars, bring them in, fix them, and everything was going to be fine. Guess what? There's still a lot of cars sitting out there. From the SEMA convention in Las Vegas, Nevada, the car coach Lauren Fix joins us. It's all coming up right here on Midpoint. <laughs>